Um, so what I want to mention here is that if you were performing row operations to a matrix, how does that affect the determinant? So the three the three operations we know about are replacement, scaling, and what happened here. Uh, that should be our interchange right there. Whoops, a daisy. Uh, so if we perform the replacement operation to a matrix, so that means we have we have a row and we add a multiple of another row to it. How does that affect the determinant? And the cool thing is, it does nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Replacement is free. It doesn't cost anything to do a replacement matrix in terms of uh, determinant calculations. And the basic reason is the following. Um, if you transformed A to get to, to B by doing a row operation, right? So if a multiple of one row of A is added to another row to produce a matrix B, then we're saying that B equals E times A, where E is the elementary matrix associated to this replacement operation. Well, if you were to take the determinant of this thing, the determinant of B, this will equal the determinant of EA, sports, um, in which case, then you get the determinant of E times the determinant of A. And so what is the determinant of E? Well, if you're doing a replacement row operation, uh, that means it's going to be either an upper or lower unit triangular matrix. You'll have ones along the diagonals, zeros on one side of the diagonal, and zeros on the other side except for a single non-zero number. But... As replacement matrices are triangular, their determinant is the product of their diagonals. And as they're unit triangular, the determinant's gonna equal one. And that's why it has no effect. Uh, you get the determinant of B is just one times the determinant of A. Scaling is a little bit different. Um, if you were to scale a row of A to get B, um, the corresponding matrix would look like a bunch of ones along the diagonal, except for a single C. And you get zeros everywhere else. Um, this scaling matrix, it's also triangular. Therefore, its determinant will be the product of the diagonals, which will be a bunch of ones and a single C. And so what happens is that when you scale a matrix, you're going to multiply the determinant of A by C to get the, the other one. So one has to be a little bit cautious about this because we're going from A to B. Um, but what do you multiply the... So let's say we're interested in the determinant of A. So we want the determinant of A, but we're, we then row reduce, we do a scaling operation. Um, if you want to find A, you have to kind of work this thing a little bit backwards. I guess what I'm trying to say is this thing you typically will think of as the determinant of A is equal to 1 over C times the determinant of B. So it's actually the inverse operation. Um... This was kind of like when we factored elementary matrices in the past. Um, you actually, whatever the raw operation you did, the inverse is the one that shows up in the factorization. Um, so you have to take reciprocals. I will show you a trick using the multilinearity of the determinant in the forthcoming examples to help you avoid confusion. Should it, like if I scale by two, do I times the determinant by two or one half? Turns out there's an easy trick one can do. And so I'll, I'll, I'll kind of show you how that works later on. And then the last one, interchange. Well, if you interchange two rows, that affects the determinant by a factor of a negative one. And so again, this is backwards. If you want to switch to the determinant of A, you have to divide by negative one, which is the same thing as multiplying by negative one. So the good thing here is that when you switch the inverse, multiplication by negative one does the exact same thing. So you don't have to worry about it. Um, when it Since replacements are free, um, it, there's no change to the determinant. So if you forget to take the reciprocal, no bigs, no big deal right there um, because it's free. This one right here is the problematic one. But like I said, if you use the multilinearity of the determinant, you can do it quite nicely. So I wanted to finish this lecture by doing a couple of examples of using row reduction to help us compute determinants uh, because the cofactor expansion is, is very difficult for large matrices. So the basic idea is if we want to do this determinant here, uh, so just write down the numbers like you did before, uh, we're going to do row operations as if we were solving a system of linear equations. And just remember the toll that you have to pay when you do a row operation, okay? So the first thing here, notice uh, that if you consider the pivot in the 1-1 one, one position, if I was row reducing this, I would want to get zeros below this pivot. 
So I would take row two and add to it two times row one, and I would take row three and add to it row one. So we're gonna get plus two, minus eight, and plus four. And then we're gonna get plus one, minus four, and plus two. And so because we're doing, we just did two row replacements. Those have no consequence to the determinant. Therefore, this matrix will be, I'm sorry, this determinant will be equal to the original one where we row reduced it. We get zero, zero, negative five. We get zero, three, and two um, after that step right there. And so if we were to continue to row reduce this thing, uh, the next elementary row operation I would want to do is I'm gonna get, I'm gonna interchange rows right here because uh, again I want to pivot my pivot position is now we're looking at the two two position so switch the rows there and so you get one negative four two you get zero three two and then you get zero zero negative five. Now there is a cost associated to doing the interchange. While replacement is free, interchange requires you multiply everything by negative one. So just remember to put a negative sign in front of the determinant and that takes care of it. Um, you'll now notice that as we've row reduced this, this matrix is now in echelon form. And what I actually care about is the following. This matrix is now a triangular matrix. Uh, in which case to find the determinant, I can actually multi multiply together the diagonal entries. So we're going to get a negative one. We got that from the interchange. We'll get one, that's the first entry, times it by three, times it by negative five, which are the second and third diagonals. If we multiply those together, we end up with a positive 15, uh, which is the determinant of this matrix. That was pretty slick. Uh, that's a lot easier than the Laplace expansion, which to be fair, we did use the Laplace expansion. Once you row, row reduce to a triangular matrix, then expand it from there. And so that's kind of our goal to row reduce it into uh, row reduce it into a triangular matrix and then take the product of the diagonals. Uh, so what about this one? Um, if I were to do this, I want to put this in row reduce echelon form. There's a couple options. You could interchange the first and second row if you want a one in the first position. Uh, but actually what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to notice... I'm going to notice that the first row is actually, everything's divisible by two. Everything's divisible by two. And so if I was thinking of this as a system of equations that I'm trying to row reduce, I would scale that row by one half. All right. And that approach is perfectly fine. Uh, theorem, uh, theorem 527 that we mentioned earlier tells us exactly what we want to do if we want to scale the first row by one half. But my experience personally and also working with students is that sometimes when we scale by one half, we, we forget, are we trying to scale by one half or by two? And so I want you to think of it the following way. Um, when you look at this determinant by the multilinearity property we mentioned before, there's a common factor of two in the first row. So factor two out of the first row, so the first row becomes one, negative four, three, and four. And then we didn't do anything to anything else. So you factor out the, the two from the first row. So don't think of it as you did the scaling operation. Think of it as you factored out of the first row. And then it'll be much more natural should there be a zero, uh, should there be a, a two or a one half out in front. It should be a two because when you factor out a two, you should still have a two that sits out in front. Uh, so now thinking in terms of row operations, we have a one right here. And so I want to zero out things below it. So I'm going to take row two minus three times row one. I'm going to take row three plus three times row one, and I'm just going to take row four minus row one. So we get minus three plus 12 minus nine minus 12. Now we're going to get plus three, same numbers, different signs, negative 12 plus nine and plus 12 right there. And then we're going to get minus one plus four uh, plus minus three, excuse me and then minus four. Now, because row replacement is free, I don't have to worry about any cost that's paid by doing the row operations. I just have to simplify the matrix. It's really cool. It really is. Um, so if we do the second row, we get zero, three, negative four, and then negative two. 
For the third row, we get 0, negative 12, uh, positive 10, and 10. And then for the last one, I'm going to scooch it up a little bit. For the last one, we're going to get a 0. We're going to get a 0. We're going to get a negative 3, and we get a positive 2, like so. And that looks pretty good. Um, one thing I also want to mention is that we were row reducing along the way, which we could do that. We absolutely could. Uh, but another thing I want to mention is what if we were to cofactor expand along the first column right here, since we have all the, these ones and zeros. Um, by the cofactor expansion, if you go across the first row, uh, the minor is going to be this thing right here. And so cofactoring across the first, the first column there, you're going to get 2 times 1 times the minor 3, negative 4, negative 2, negative 12, 10, and 10, 0, negative 3, and 2. So we actually don't need the first row anymore because when you times, uh, when you times 1 by this minor, we get this thing over here. And then when you times 0 by all the other minors, they disappear. So we actually can get the following thing. Of course, uh, 2 times 1 is just going to be a 2 right there. So we can kind of drop the first row at, once we got that pivot position ready to go. Um, now if we go on, our pivot position uh, is right here. If we wanted to, we could factor out a, a scalar multiple right here because everything's divisible by 2. I don't really care to do that right now because what I'm just going to do is do another row replacement. Um, or maybe, maybe, uh, should we, should we? Why not? Let's do it. Uh, it's, it's good practice. So let's factor out a 2 from the second row because everything's divisible by 2 right there. So if we factor out the 2, we're going to get 2 times 2 because 2 times 1 was 2. And so then you get 3, negative 4, negative 2. Uh, then if we factor out a 2, you're left behind with negative 6, 5, 5. And then we left the third row alone. So now we're going to do replacements. Uh, we're going to take row 2 plus 3 times row 1. Because uh, I already have a 0 below on the third row. I don't need to do really anything else other than that. Uh, so we're going to do our little markers here. We get a plus 6, we get a minus 12, and we get a, uh, I'm sorry, what am I What am I talking about here? Back up, back up, back up. Uh, we don't want to do, we don't want to do plus 3, uh, sorry. Uh, we want to do plus 2 times row 1. 2 times 3 gives us 6, and so that gives us plus 6. Uh, we'll get minus 8. And then we're going to get minus 4 right there. Uh, so in the front, we have 2 times 2, which is 4. Uh, we'll get 3, negative 4, negative 2. We're going to get 0. Uh, 8 take away, sorry, 5 take away 8 should be a negative 3. And then 5 take away 1 is, sorry, 5 take away 4 is 1. And then we have, end up with 0. Negative 3, 2. We didn't do anything to those ones right there. All right. Uh, and so then again, if you cofactor expand the first row, or the first column here, right, we only have to look at this minor now, right here. And so because everything else is a zero along the way, uh, you're going to end up with 4 times 3 times the 2 by 2 minor, negative 3, 1, negative 3, 2 for which we could try to simplify this thing using row replacement, but as it's a two by two, we might just choose to um, just calculate the diagonals like we did before. Four times three is 12. Uh, we're gonna get negative three times two, which is negative six, uh, minus negative three, so that's a plus three. So we end up with 12 times negative three, which gives us a determinant of negative 36. And I just wanna mention this calculation, I did a little bit differently than the book, uh, feel free to take a look at the book, which the link is in the description of this video here. And you can see how an alternative approach, I just, I kind of did more row replacements along the way, but this all kind of works out great. Uh, let's do one more example where we're going to kind of combine row operations with the cofactor expansions we did before. So with this matrix right here, I noticed there is a, there's a two in the second position a second row, and there's also a negative 2 in the fourth row there. So I can get rid of that negative 2 quite easily by taking row 4 
plus row two. And so that's going to give us plus two, plus five, minus seven, and plus three. And so in terms of our matrix, we get nothing happened to the first row or the, or the second or the third. Uh, lastly, though, the fourth row changes, we get a zero. We got five plus five. Who can read that? I don't know. Uh, four minus seven, which is negative three, and then negative two plus three, which is a plus one. So we perform that row operation right there. And to notice now the first row, the first, uh, not the first row, I keep on saying that, the first column, um, we all have, we just have zero, two, zero, zero, right? So if we were to cofactor expand this row, we have to pay attention to the signs. So it starts off plus, minus, plus, minus. So when we cofactor expand, we're gonna get a negative two in front. <laughs> And then there's only the three by three minor that's left. One, two, negative one. Uh, we ignore the second row because we're on that one right now. Three, six, two, and then zero, negative three, and one. Like so, then everything else will zero out. So notice we could have chosen to interchange the two rows, so we get the two at the top. Um, and then when we cofactor expand, we'd have a positive, but there's a cost to interchange, right? It's a negative sign. It's kind of wonderful how these different techniques end up doing the same thing. So you have a lot of liberty on deciding how you want to do things. Uh, so, so I just cofactor across the first column because we had zeros there at all. So I, you don't really have to interchange that much. You just have to um, – replacement is free, a factor to get scalars, and then you can interchange or just use cofactors to make sure you have the right sign. All right, uh, so for this matrix right here, um, I want to do another replacement. I'm going to take row two minus three times row one. So we get minus three minus six and then a plus three right there. Replacement is free, so it does not affect the determinant whatsoever. We're going to get one, two, negative one. We get zero, zero, five, and then we get zero, negative three, one, like so. And so my advice would be now to cofactor expand across the first column. I said it right that time. Booyah. And since that coefficient's a one, uh, we'll end up with, let me slide this up. We're going to get negative two times one times it by the two by two determinant, zero, five, negative three, and one. And in this situation, you could keep on going with like the with the row replacements, um, with the other row operations, or some of the other properties. But as it's a two by two, I'm just going to take uh, the difference of the diagonal products because that's a nice little trick for two by twos. And so negative two times one is a negative two. So we get zero times one, which is zero, and we're then going to subtract five times negative three, uh, which ends up with a negative or positive fifteen. And so negative two times fifteen gives us a negative 30 as our determinant. So I hope these examples we just saw uh, give us some pretty good experience on how we can simplify determinant calculations of large matrices like 3 by 3, 4 by 4, 5 by 5, and etc. How we can combine the multilinearity of the function uh, with, the, uh, with the row replacements and also with the cofactor expansions. When we combine all of these techniques together, we can actually compute determinants very effectively. Um, it really becomes no more difficult than solving a system of linear equations. And so if you have any questions with this video, please post them in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them for you. If you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe if you wanna see some more updates in the future and we will talk some more linear algebra next time. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.